Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys? This is Chazzy and welcome to quite possibly the most egregious video on this channel. You know, the one that's going to turn all of the knowledge that you guys have about certain things upside down. I'm going to be debunking a very famous myth, probably one that exists since humanity was a thing, which is the whole, you know, do we only use 10% of our brains debunk, all right? Now, this should be pretty obvious to some of you, or at least the ones who, wow, there's a lot of wind coming in right now. Oh, that feels so good. Oh my God, that feels good. You guys have no idea how good this wind feels right now. It's because it's been really hot lately and a little breezy. And I actually should close the window so the, so the wind doesn't interfere with the audio, but if it gets too bad, I will. But anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, so a good number of you guys might actually understand how this works already. You might have already, you should already know at this point how this whole 10% of the brain thing works, but because there are people who believe the earth is flat, I figured I took it upon myself to give you guys a little bit more common day knowledge, even if it is pretty obvious, you know, but, but basically, do we use 10% of our brains? The short answer, no. And uh, this has been it for today's The Mixer. This is Chazzy signing out for now. And as always, I'll see. Okay, but no, seriously, guys, come on. I actually separated a few things here. I created like a little cheat sheet of sorts here for, because uh, I always like to uh, use my tablet, you know, a lot of my videos, you know, I like to really use this thing to do research and it kind of takes away the pressure of having to study something beforehand. I can just use it here and give you guys, did I cut my hand? There's a painful little thing on my hand here. I, don't know if I actually cut my arm yesterday. Can you guys see that? It's like a Spider-Man. Can you see the cut? Yeah, it's pretty freaking crazy, huh? Groovy. Chicks dig the cuts. But anyway, so <clears throat> now here's the thing, guys. It is very popular and a widely spread belief that we only use 10% of our brains and if we could use a little bit more, then you know, the, uh, we could become in insanely smart. You know, the concept was actually explored in that movie, uh, the one with Bradley Cooper, I forgot the name, Limitless, you know, where he takes a pill that allows him to use 100% of his brain, you know, and he becomes this insanely smart guy who, who pretty much knows everything and he, he starts betting in the stock market and things like that. He knows what's going to happen, so he makes a lot of money, but then the pill wears off and he goes back to being dumb, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, so here's how it works. Now, here's the thing, guys. The 10% claim is actually 100% myth, okay? It is completely fake. It has no basis in fact at all. And you actually use all of your brain. You know, the only instances where you are actually, where there are unused regions of your brain is when there's brain disease, you know, brain damage, that kind of thing, which has destroyed certain regions. So you don't use 100% of your brain if you have like Alzheimer's or Parkinson, for example, you know, but I think Alzheimer's is a much better example because it literally has to do with brain loss, you know, but here's the thing. Now, we have always been able to use the full capacity of our brain, you know, and the origins of the myth are actually pretty interesting. Really interesting as well, you know, because I really like researching this and I wanted to kind of give you guys a, I wanted to give you very accurate information. So instead of trying to memorize it, I'm gonna actually read for you guys here. This legend has existed since the early 1900s and it was influenced by people who misunderstood neurological research, you know? So this 10% myth, might actually have emerged from the writings of psychologist and philosopher William James in a book that he released in 1908, which is called The Energies of Men. Very strange name for a book. He said, we are making use of only a small part of our possible mental and physical resources, you know? And of course it has perpetuated like many other urban legends, you know? And it's very weird actually, because I mean, think about it like if this was true if we did only at all times only use 10% of our brains and we could somehow unlock the other 90% I actually imagine that I always thought I used to believe in this myth you know I actually thought that like it, it was possible to access more than 10% and then the people who did were like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs um, um, Elon Musk, uh, Stephen Hawking before Elon Musk, his name, his name escaped me. We had Nicholas Tesla way back in the day. So, and engineers in general, you know, um, architects, and I also believe mathematicians, you know, people like this are the ones who can really unlock that brain power, you know, because to be these kinds of people, you have to be extremely intelligent. Now there are people outside talking, my neighbors. So that's the way that I conceive this. And oh, the audio back, the, the audio, interruptions now 
Okay, so while my neighbors talk in the background, I'm going to be giving you guys a few tidbits of info here that I think are really interesting. Five little proven facts here related to neuroscience, you know. There are actually a number of reasons why this 10% myth is completely false. The first one, brain imaging scans clearly show that almost all regions of the brain are active during even fairly routine tasks like talking, walking, and listening to music, you know, doing chores or maybe uh, editing a YouTube video, you know, recording and editing. So your brain is always active at all times, 100% of the time. So you're not ever really only using 10% of it, you know I mean? I don't even think if you're mentally retarded, you use only 10% of your brain. Uh, next one, if the 10% myth was actually true, people who suffer brain damage as the result of an accident or a stroke or something would, would probably not even notice any real effect at all. So in reality, there isn't a single area of the brain that can be damaged without resulting in some sort of consequence, you know? So it's pretty much impossible for you to use, like I said before, less than 10% of your brain, you know? Even if you have some kind of brain damage. I don't think people with Down syndrome suffer too much from it, you know? Like, I'm not really sure like what percentage of the brain they are able to use. But then again, we're talking about an actual mental disorder. You know, it wasn't an accident or anything. They were just born this way. So they already have some difficulty in utilizing a good part of their brain. But I, I still think even they use more than 10%, you know? Now, here's the thing. Human beings would not have evolved such large brains if we were using only 10% of them, you know? So if we only use 10% of our brains, it wouldn't, it would have been, from an evolutionary standpoint, it would have been impossible to have come as far as we came, you know? Places like Japan, you know, which, which is, in my opinion, the most technologically advanced place on the planet, you know? And Dubai, who have, uh, they invest a lot of money in really tall skyscrapers and uh, economic uh, areas and sort of the thing, you know? So the United States, which is probably the most, um, uh, the strongest potential in the world right now, you know, we have Russia as well, you know, who, I mean, we have places that e exemplify how it would be impossible for us to use only 10% of our brains, you know, because these countries, you know, the people running these countries clearly use a lot more than that, you know, so that's the way that I understood this. Next one. The brain uses approximately 20% of your body's energy at any given time. So it would actually not make a lot of sense from an evolutionary standpoint to have such a large portion of your energy resources utilized by such a tiny amount of the brain. So aside from that, you know, we're talking like something physical now. It doesn't make sense for you to only use 10% of your brain and then you have 20% of your body need, 20% uh, energy in your body needing your brain to function, you know. So also it, it doesn't really, if you really stop to think about it, like after I looked into this and researched it and the, bunk, and the myth was debunked for me, it really didn't make a lot of sense at all how we could use such a small part of the brain, you know? It is interesting when a movie like Limitless plays on the concept of you actually having to, uh, to, to use such a small part of it and then you unlock the rest of it and you suddenly become the smartest guy on the planet, you know? It's very interesting to play with this idea and toy around with it, but it doesn't really... I don't know, if you really start to think about it, it's actually really dumb. There's no basis in reality. And the last one, brain mapping research. I, I love it when I when I uh, uh, mess with my glasses, it makes me sound really smart. Like, oh yeah, so according to my calculations. But anyway, brain mapping research has yet to find any region of your brain that doesn't serve a single function, okay? So numerous types of brain imaging studies show that no area of the brain is completely silent or inactive, which is written by Dr. Rachel C. Vreeming and Dr. Erin E. Carroll in the study of, of uh, medical myths. So detailed probing of the brain has failed to identify the non-functioning 90%, you know? So basically, uh, it's impossible, you know, it is impossible. Now, here's the thing, guys. There are a few other things here that I'm going to say before I continue. Of course, the 10% myth is still popular and persistent. There are people who still believe in, like those who think the earth is flat, and it has been repeated in popular culture, other movies, you know, like also the, the 2014 film Lucy starring Scarlett Johansson and Morgan Freeman. Now, here's the thing, guys. The next time that you hear somebody telling you about this whole 10% myth, you already know that it's not true, and you have the guidelines here to explain it to them the same way that I researched a little bit, and I'm giving the information to you guys here too. And now, not to say that we don't have amazing potential, you know, and uh, we just use 100% of our brains to accomplish everything that we do. So this whole uh, thing here, you know, the whole debacle of 10% is 100% false. It's a myth. Okay, now I want to give you guys a little bit of my own spin on it, you know, what I think about this in general, you know. Back in the day when I used to believe in this whole 10% myth, I actually thought that, like, what if it was possible? Like, what is the, the threshold for you to be considered, you know, above reality, you know, because usually we calculate intelligence by IQ points, you know, what is your IQ level, but we have seen people do great things, you know, like, for example, Stephen Hawking, who came up with very different concepts, Albert Einstein, who I hadn't mentioned before, you know, like these people, if we as regular average humans, you know, only use 10% of our brains, then what percentage do people like these use? You know, like Einstein, you know, Stephen Hawking, uh, 
Bill Gates. Like, did they use 20% and just this additional 10% is already enough to make them freaking, you know, masterminds of their craft? Do they use 50%, you know, or do they actually get all the way to 100, you know? And I've always thought, what if Bill Gates only uses 20% of his brain, you know, and he's already intelligent the way he is? So imagine somebody using 100%, you know, that person would literally know everything. They would be able to read minds practically, you know, and I always used to play with this concept in my head. Like what if it's possible to actually, you know, unlock, you know, like unlock the rest of these percentages of your brain. Then a few years ago, I found out that it was a complete myth, you know, so I was like, oh, okay, so there's no more fun in it now. There's no fun in trying to uh, unlock a bigger side of your own brain activity and trying to be a lot smarter than you actually are, you know, but it's okay. I mean, it's nice that it's always good when scientists, neurologists, you know, uh, doctors, they're able to debunk certain myths that we think, but it is nice to think about sometimes, you know, it is nice to think like, what if this was true? What if it actually would be possible for us to access a bigger part of our brains, you know? Now, we are constantly using every part of our brain, you know, and it's actually scary to think that, you know, such a small organ right there in the middle of our skull is responsible for literally everything. You know, our hearts are what makes us be alive, but without our brains, we pretty much, we're just an empty shell. You know, like if you get brain damage or if you suffer from an accident that leaves your brain fractured, you can't fracture a brain, Chaz. <laughs> leaves your skull fractured and it somehow damages your brain, you know, it's just... I mean, depending on the, the the amount of damage, it's either going to, you know, pretty much turn you into a dumb vegetable or it's just going to kill you outright, you know? There was a, a Formula One racer called Ayrton Senna. He's actually a Brazilian national hero. In 1994, he suffered a, a, a severe accident that killed him instantly where um, a metal rod penetrated his helmet, his skull, and went right through his brain, killed him, you know, immediately. I'm going to be doing another video about him later, you know, but... It's very scary to think that our brains are so fragile yet so important, you know? It is the most important thing we have in our body and uh, a lot of people take it for granted, you know? And uh, I actually, there's a quote from Spider-Man 2 by um, Dr. Otto Octavius that actually resonates very well with me still to this day that intelligence is a gift and we have to use it for the good of mankind. So if you are the kind of person who's very, uh, like Bill Gates, for example, who is obviously very intelligent, he, he know, I, I, for example, I have a difficulty in studying certain things researching it especially if it's something that doesn't really interest me but intelligence is usually defined by if you're like a quantum physics uh you know a scientist or something of the sort or you're majoring in a very hard area to study you know that's how people define intelligence but intelligence can also be from a money-making standpoint if you're a business magnet you know how to make a lot of money you're uh, an illustrious businessman that also makes you intelligent at least in my book so yeah that's just the way i think but in general i think that like we are always using 100% of our brains at any given moment, you know? So even when you're like, when you're before you go to sleep and you're thinking about a lot of different things going on, you know, that's already using a good percentage of your brain as well. So it, it's no fun, <laughs> you know, when this myth was debunked, it was no fun. It was like, oh, so now we can't really strive for more percentage of our brains, but it still does make a lot of sense in general, you know? And then again, I mean, if you stop to think about it, what if we really did only use 10% of our brains? I mean, how, would it even be possible to harness the other 90%, you know? That's what I always thought when I was younger. But it was it's an interesting myth, you know? And uh, I'm pretty sure there are some of you guys who thought that this was not possible at all. You know, and probably watching this video debunked the myth for you, which is cool. It's totally fine, there's no problem. But you know, it's there are people who probably still believe it, no doubt about it, like people who believe the earth is flat. Oh God, I recorded that video, it's already uploaded, but man, I can't get that through my head. People who think the damn earth is flat. But anyway, you know, this is what this channel is for. This is what the mixer is for, you know, debunking myths and giving you guys a bunch of different information that I hope you find interesting. And that's it for today. Very short video. My vlogs have been getting shorter lately, you know. I just want to record a bunch in a row and give you guys different... I'm sorry if it sounded like I was rushing a little bit earlier, you know. It's just because there's a lot of noise, pollution going around right now. There's neighbors doing construction and dogs barking and cars honking, you know, and kids, you know, doing their thing. So I'm trying to... I'm not exactly rushing, but at the same time I am because I want to get through it while it's still early and there's, you know, no distractions right now. So... That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, share it. Please, for the love of God, subscribe to my channel. I'm coming up on 400 videos, you know, and uh, by then I want to have 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> okay, I aimed a little too high there, but a couple more wouldn't hurt, right? So this is Chazzy signing out for now, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.